Fonts Without Borders, and today we're talking about Counting Tiles, a beautiful film by Cynthia Schuker. It follows the clowns in Lesbos in 2016, and here with us we have Cynthia, Sabine, Jan, Tamara, and Colleen, who are all part of the team, and rather than me introduce everyone, I'm going to have everyone introduce themselves. Hi, uh, I'm Cynthia Schuker. I'm the director of the film and uh, I'm also the uh, Sabine's sister, one of the clowns uh, that you'll be meeting now. Uh, I'm Lebanese uh, <laughs> uh, and I want uh, to follow the, uh, the mission of the, uh, the clowns in 2016 in February 2016. Hey, uh, I'm Sabine, Cynthia's sister. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and uh, so, yeah, I was one of the clowns on the tour. Uh, I'm in Lebanon now in my apartment uh, in the confinement. <laughs> my name is Jan Dom. I'm 36 years old. I am coming to you from my home in Brattleboro, Vermont, United States. Um, I, the uh, trip to Lesbos was my fifth trip with Clowns Without Borders. I've also been to Haiti twice. Uh, Lebanon on another trip with Sabine, and Indonesia on another trip with Colleen. Um, and that's me. Hey, I'm Colleen Kintz. I'm Cynthia and Sabine's other sister. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> I'm in Baltimore, Maryland. Um, and the West Coast trip was my third uh, project with Clowns Without Borders. I'm Tamara, and um, I joined the troop to Lesbos as the communications officer and logistician. There's a whole song about it, about the uh, logistician. It's uh, riveting, um, but it was a great trip and um, really enjoyed my time there. I'm coming to you from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. The first question is for Cynthia, if you could just tell us what was your original inspiration for the film and then also, um, what, what did the film end up becoming? Okay, so um, uh, Sabine uh, went to Lesbos in uh, September 2015 and uh, I was uh, following her uh, on her Facebook uh, page because she was uh, covering all her trip and it was, back then it was really, um, a lot of people crossed the, the sea uh, to go to Europe and it was uh, a big thing. Um, we were, I felt that we were witnessing one of the biggest, uh, 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 one of the biggest thing that, ha that are happening in the history. Uh, and we were um, incapable of helping. Uh, I decided to uh, follow, follow her on her next trip. Um, um, I remember when uh, it, was, uh, it was in 2015, uh, uh, there, there was a report about uh, their mission in Lesbos and uh, the, the report got, so in 2016, in February 2016, when uh, I uh, followed her, uh, when we just landed, all our plans changed because uh, the Greek authority has put uh, new regulating uh, the sea were put in like uh, uh, like a wire. Uh, it was like a prison uh, in the camp, um, and we found uh, ourselves like on this island, uh, paralyzed uh, in the middle of nowhere. We didn't know. Uh, we were waiting and waiting for uh, all the all kind of permission to uh, uh, to get in order to get into the camp. Um, <clears throat> um, that was like very frustrating. Um, and to be honest, uh, I felt the feeling of war uh, surrounded me without uh, even uh, having any bombs. Um, so. I can tell you that all my anxiety that was caused by the war um, came back to me and I felt I wanted to, to go back home. And uh, going back home meant that I had to go back to 
my own memories uh, that I lived during the war, the civil war, where we were forced to move also from place to another. Um, and I had to confront it. So yeah, that was it. I'd love to know from the, um, the clowns who are part of the tour and then Tamara as a logistician, what was a moment um, from the film that, that surprised you or from being on tour, a moment that, um, that surprised you? Something that when you, when you think of it now, the, the memory is almost as fresh as if it had just happened. Well, something that was interesting to me in viewing the film recently under self-isolation here in Baltimore. Um, I had seen it a couple of times before, but watching it again now, I feel like the relevancy of, um, the, it had a very quarantine-y kind of feel to me when I was watching it. The waiting and the underlying uh, high level of trauma that was there around all of us, but that we're just waiting, waiting. And so I felt like there was a really familiar familiarity with what I'm feeling right now at home in watching the film. So that was interesting in a, another viewing. Mm. Who else is ready? Jan? Uh, I, I had a quick question for Cynthia. Yeah. Uh, so the, yeah, I, I watched the film recently um th this uh there's a scene where you say hey Jan, come over here and then i talk for a long time and i have a monologue um i remember it very distinctly uh, uh the conversation we had um but uh the camera obviously wasn't on during that time because there's no footage of us talking is that would that be accurate but i would have been wearing a microphone so obviously i knew i was being recorded but i remember the conversation so distinctly when i first watched the film i was surprised to see it in the film because I wasn't being filmed by a camera. Um, would, does that, is that accurate? Yeah, actually, uh, um, actually it was like me on the sound and uh, Joel on the camera. It was like always like this. And we were mm -hmm. sometimes like me recording, uh, uh, taking uh, some recordings uh, myself uh, on my own and her too. But I remember uh, on that moment, uh, I was talking to you and then she left and I felt that it was too emotional and I had to continue and that's why uh, I went uh, on with the recording and uh, well uh, that moment I was not I was surprised myself because I I, I cried and I um, I don't know I um, I learned a lot from this conversation and I learned from you because when you, we were, we were all frustrated um, uh, in that moment and you told me something that was really, uh, it, it hit me that we are not old refugees and I think this is something that uh, every volunteer has to put in mind that we are not old refugees if you want to help or if we want to, um, if we help that does not mean that we did uh, um, that we are good. Uh, so yeah, I I, um, I felt that all the film was a trip, uh, and uh, the trip was like worth uh, putting things. I cried in the scene, and it was very hard for me to like keep the the crying. And okay. I said at, um, at, at the end of the day, let's uh, um, uh, um, let's keep that I learned from, and I wanted to share this with everyone as well. Well, I'm glad. I'm so glad that it was included in the film. Uh, I should just say first of all, and but it did surprise me. Um, obviously, that's when it hit home for me. <laughs> well, it's very, it's, it's two experiences, right? That's when it hit home for me how personal the experience was for you because we had a conversation about it and you surprised me when you cried because I at the time was feeling quite numb and my usual self, very sarcastic, um, but you were having a very different experience and the film itself obviously became a more personal experience for you. Um, but there's almost nothing for me to say about my experience because I said it in the film <laughs> because you included that monologue. Um, so I'm glad I'm I'm so glad it was put in the film and it really uh, that's 
uh, it, it says for me how my experience was. And it also, it was cool that you got to share with me the experience you were having at that time. And this, this conversation is a moment the, the team had been turned away and turned away and turned away. And the whole tour, the clowns showed up built a show ready to go um, and every day go to the beaches. They were receiving uh, texts for text messages for when, um, when boats of refugees would be arriving and day after day after day, not, not being able to meet the audience. And there's a really, the whole, the whole tour became about how, um, you know, a big piece of that was managing managing that that feeling of loss and loss and loss of of arriving with this intention to share joy and not being able to. And there's a beautiful scene where Jan Jan talks about this idea of not not being owed an an audience. Um, yeah, what I was trying to can I, since, yeah. since we're here, what I was trying to say there was in fact, and you see a little bit in the film, but was in fact sparked by the fact that I kept looking at the camera and rolling my eyes because there was literally nothing else happening. That there was no other experience that I was having. I don't feel like I'm, I didn't feel deprived of shows, but there was no shows happening. And, um, and so the only uh, uh, experience I was having in that moment was being filmed by Cynthia and, uh, and her crew. So, so I kept looking at the camera and she said, you can't look at the camera. And I'm like, and I was trying to tell her like, there's, there's nothing else happening. And I'm like a theatrical person. I, I feel like I'm on stage all the time. Um, so I'm sorry, this I feel like this, there's no other me underneath here, you know? And that's what I was trying to, I said it much better in the film because I had time. To <laughs> <laughs> so, so you can watch the film and see. And hear how well he says it there. You won't get to see his eyes rolling, but maybe we'll get to see that just now on Facebook Live. When I first watched the film, and you know, when I've seen it since, I remember the the first thing that struck me about the film that I wasn't expecting was this like beautiful story of the relationship between Cynthia and Sabine. Um, and not only was that beautiful to see in the film and that that was the focal point um, of a lot of the story. But what struck me was, you know, I was there with the two of you in the midst of, of the filming, um, in some of the discussions, you know, post-production, all that. And I never, it never dawned on me during the whole Lesbos experience, how deeply personal this particular tour was to the both of you because of your experience of the civil war in Lebanon. Uh, so that was, I remember watching that for the first time and I was like, oh. <laughs> and you know, I, I always, I have a different perspective on the whole thing because I'm not um, a, a trained artist. And so uh, just having, having been a part of that was spectacular. And then seeing it put together in the film, it just did a wonderful job. So, so for me, I've watched the film uh, a lot, so <laughs> uh, many times. <laughs> uh, but, but no, something really, uh, really interesting is from, from that tour, of course, I remember the frustration and everything we talk about in the movie and, uh, and this whole journey that was, that was very, um, yeah, very, very touching in, in many different ways. But uh, also, uh, it's one of the tours where I remember every show we did or we ended up doing. Um, because, well, of course, it was, there was very little shows that we actually did. But the moments were so spectacular and so important and so beautiful in a way. Like, I remember... Uh, there's there's one scene in the film where where the, the wind is going like crazy and then we see we see volunteers uh, trying to put shield uh, windshield but then after that in reality we had one of the most amazing shows in this tiny little space where you know everybody was so was was all of a sudden warm and then watching clowns like so so i remember these very very uh 
yeah specific moments and 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 feelings and and joy uh that i don't necessarily remember in every uh other tour i've i've been i've been to or i've done um yeah that's off uh off the movie <laughs> um did, was there more footage of us performing that you chose not to include because the theme of the show became the frustration and i'm saying this with no judgment i'm just wondering actually i felt that um uh, I wanted to be loyal to the feeling that we got during the trip, and it was a big, big, big frustration. And even we were able that we were able to perform and to film footage. But when I saw, I, it was a decision that I had to take because when I, for me, the the scene with the little girl was something very, um, I don't know, meaningful for me, uh, and meaningful, uh, meaningful for all, uh, for the clowns. Um, mission or the clown's uh, uh, work. Um, and uh, I was also, um, um, before I went to Lesbos, I, uh, to Lesbos, I was like uh, overwhelmed by the, uh, load, uh, by the load of images that we uh, saw on televisions. Uh, and I didn't want to repeat the same uh, angle. Um, uh, and uh, I wanted to like uh, uh, emphasize on the fact that uh, each one uh, or each uh, 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 person who is crossing the sea and uh, uh, doing this dangerous trip has a personal story. And uh, um, I didn't want to like. Uh, um, consider like a mass, uh, so one, uh, let's say, uh, performance, and that was uh, with the kid. Uh, I know we have the other performances that were really, really nice, and uh, but I felt um, I would give uh, more importance to uh, the human beings behind uh, the the loads, the piles of jackets that we've seen also in the films. I wanted to say, I think that was the right choice. Uh, if there's such a thing in documentaries, I'm not sure. But uh, yeah, it did, while there were some several nice shows, and that's important context for the audience to understand that we did do shows there. There was a couple of nice, very nice interventions, I would say, even if they weren't formal shows. And I remember distinctly the girl um, with the bubbles and the banana. Um, because it felt like it felt in the movie. It was like a lot, of, a whole lot of nothing, and then we get this magical girl. But um, but also, I you, the film represents accurately the experience, which is it didn't feel like a normal clown's trip. It felt like a whole lot of nothing. Um, so I appreciate that. I have a question that's both for Cynthia and Sabine. I'm really curious about um, if your answers are the same, um, which is when. When did you know that the film would have such a personal story with your families and your own experience of um, the civil war and displacement? Yeah, actually, I was um, I knew from when I was there that I was going to introduce this in the film. But uh, I, when I went uh, for filming, I wanted to try another way of filming. I, um, I didn't want to, as I told you, to repeat the same kind of images that we used to see uh, on television. So that's why I put myself in a, um, in a place where I uh, didn't want to make any interview. I wanted to, to, to feel um, uh, the flow of the whole trip and observe. I wanted to uh, observe um, and I wanted to see, to see and observe. Um, so if I, uh, if I had to be honest with myself, I knew all the, uh, the memories of the war came to me uh, from day three uh, uh, in the trip, uh, but I didn't share them with, any, uh, with anyone. Um, but when uh, Sebastian uh, asked me in the car, uh, is it your first trip in, uh, in Greece? And I tell him, yes, actually, it is my first trip, and then I suddenly remember that no, when I was two, I went, uh, we flew to, uh, uh, to Greece with my parents because we, 
ran away from uh, war and we stayed there for two years. And that was completely out of my mind. Um, so when he asked me these questions, okay, I remember that. And I, I, I remember that that was a striking moment uh, that I lived during uh, this trip. And uh, okay, um, it, uh, it, uh, it brought me a lot of memories. When, when Cynthia called me and said, hey, can you come to the office? I want to ask you some questions and record these questions. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea. I mean, I knew that she was, you know, thinking about uh, the editing and, and what's the storyline and how she wants to do it and everything, but I did not expect you know, when I went to record and she started asking these questions, I was like, oh my God. <laughs> it was, um, yeah. It Especially when we moment. found, when we found out about Hadi uh, and Madi, because Sabine yeah. really had played with Hadi and Madi for like four or five years. I don't remember, maybe eight years. <laughs> and for those of you who haven't, seen the film yet, Hadi and Maddie are um, two very important friends from Sabine's childhood. Um, and they are also were, are, were imaginary, imaginary friends. And they, they kind of become these, these characters, these children who, who join the story and the tour. Um, I want to talk about one of the, the opening scenes, which is um, in one of the opening scenes, we hear um, Cynthia and Sabine play um, what I'll call the haha -ha game of where, where one person laughs and the, the next person has to laugh a little louder and then you build the laughter. And um, Cynthia asks, but like, but what if it's not real? And Sabine says, oh, but of course it's not real, but it, it will become real. And so I'd love to know, um, especially from the clowns, what do you do either when you have a show and you don't, you don't feel full of joy, but it's your job to, um, to at least share joy, or how do you make yourself happy when you're not feeling happy? And Colleen, I'm gonna pass to you because I know that um, you work as a hospital clown and this is something we've talked about before. You think about my first project with Clowns Without Borders and being in Indonesia and being on a particularly very long journey to a remote school that we were gonna perform at. And somewhere along that ride, I started to feel like I didn't have it <laughs> to give. And I got very worried. I was really sad and overwhelmed and feeling so pulled down by the environments um, we were engaging with and and I just wasn't sure what I was gonna do how I would like clown up and when we finally arrived at a school and were surrounded by children it you know it was like instant like the heart meter boop, 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 boop. Boom, boom. and so I feel like a lot of times when I'm down what lifts me it comes from other people and that's probably what I see as a hospital clown is that it's usually the children who are leading our play and who are inspiring us. Um, children's propensity for play is remarkable. And as a parent, I now see that, that that switch can just, but I always play with dogs as you see in the film, that helps me. <laughs> <laughs> Jan, do you have something that you do to, um, to find your funny or pretend to be funny? Um, <laughs> yes, well, it's all pretend as you know. Um, no, the haha -ha game is like almost a perfect metaphor for Clowns Without Borders, right? Like it's, 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 it's a completely um, synthetic uh, time of joy that becomes organic through interaction between people that need joy, um, human beings, you know? And so, it, there, but there's nothing magic, there's nothing like mysterious about it. If you have an interaction with someone else who's pretending to laugh, that is an inherently funny situation. And I think going in and doing clown shows in, in very difficult situations and situations where there's been situational trauma and, you know, um, other, other difficult uh, circumstances, um, that is an absurd act. And it is itself kind of funny. And if you do it and you commit to it, people will start laughing. And that their, their laughter, even if they're just laughing because, you know, look at these absurd foreigners who came here, 
um, you then also start to find humor in the situation. So it's, it's, it's it, yeah, it's, it's just an interaction between um, people who want to laugh and then uh, the laughter sort of follows. We also have lots of absurd tricks like falling down and hitting each other and blowing bubbles and juggling that all of which are things you can do when you're not feeling very funny um, that, that you can follow until you find the funny. I agree with uh, both Colleen and Jan. It's, it's a mixture of, of, of both. It's when, for me, when I open the door of the car and want to start, it's just, it just comes no matter what. It's just like the energy comes from, from the anticipation of people or of what's going to happen. Uh, and also, and also we have some techniques that we use, uh, that, that, you know, I know that they, they help in, in a way or another. And then, and then it becomes, it becomes real. And that's, that's the real joy of, of tours with Clowns Without Borders. It's, we go, um, and we know that by the end of every trip, we got, a lot i mean if not as much as what people got maybe more uh just because of all these moments of real real joy uh that we uh, that we experience tamara i know your experience on the tour was as the logistician you were often driving the car on tamara, the phone tamara, with the camps tamara. talking to the police <laughs> da, 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 da. and i'm wondering um what you did <laughs> or how you found found joy, didn't find joy, how you, how you kept doing your work. I think my primary goal was to make sure that nobody got arrested and their passports revoked. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. uh, <laughs> very true. <laughs> Thank God. Thank God for Tamara. <laughs> and in particular, is, uh, gets a bit rowdy at times when someone tells her that she can't perform for children and, you know, bring people happiness. No, just kidding. Um, basically, just to piggyback off of what everyone was saying, um, the find your funny from the outsider's perspective. So when you when you're not a trained clown and maybe maybe Cynthia, you, you could agree with me on this one. You're in the car with all of these clowns who are having very sometimes serious discussions about um, the circumstances or the show itself that they're going to be performing. And then we roll up on the site and they get out of the car and it's an instantaneous transformation from um, normal human to superhuman clown where they can get out of the car. They walk into an environment that could be very hostile or confusing or just, you know, people are, have no idea what's happening and why these strangely dressed people are here. And they immediately, immediately fall into this beautiful role of clown, this disarming clown who is able to reshape the environment. Whatever, whatever energy that was there before, they will change it and make it magically positive and funny. And uh, so it's funny that we're having this discussion about how you find your funny when you think you don't have it, because from the outsider's perspective, we don't see it. We just see this unspoken transformation and it's it's quite magical how um how can you be natural and funny like how do you um how do you use your natural self to to find your funny to, i sometimes my being natural is means that if um if something is frustrating i i lean into that and so i'll maybe play up the being confused and that's maybe not funny to me, but funny to the audience. And one of the, the beauties of the clown is that they, they get to feel emotions so much larger than, um, than we're supposed to as adults in the world. And so the clown gets to be very angry and sort of take, take that tiny frustration of um, tripping over a shoelace and playing that really big. And for the for the audience, that's that can be funny because it's it's such a natural experience of um, of, of tripping or of you know the, the clown picks up a prop and their their clown partner takes it away and you know maybe as an adult you sort of say like okay it's not my turn but as a clown you get to be so angry about it so that's 
that's my answer. I should just say, clarify, and maybe maybe Sabine will disagree me, with me on this one, but I think as humanitarian volunteers, not all of the clowning that we're doing is naturalistic in the way that we would in a theater show, right? So um, some of us also are performers um, that all volunteer with Clowns Without Borders. Um, and so if you are in a theater workshop, you might try and do something very raw and very emotional um, in front of an audience uh, to try and create some sort of um, theatrical effect. But if you're in an orphanage in Haiti, or if you're trying to tell kids not to touch mines in Lebanon, you actually have to be very careful about some things that you say and some emotions that you display in order to be mindful of the, uh, the trauma or the sensitivities of the situation. So some of the things we're doing are less natural and more absurd, but the natural element of it is the interaction um, and, and the, the joy of the experience, not so much our uh, natural emotional selves. That's my take on it. That brings me to a scene in the film where the, the clowns are discussing and then rehearsing the, the skit dead or alive. And they're discussing sort of how, how to show conflict in the, in the performance, but also how to show a heavier, a heavier topic. And um, Cynthia, I'd love to know why you included that and then from the clowns, I'd love a quick description of what is that scene, dead or alive? And also what, um, what do you feel about having, having conflict, having a scene where a clown is dead in a clown show? Yeah, for me as an outsider who came and uh, observed the clowns as well and lived with them, I noticed how they <clears throat> spend their, uh, their time on like really thinking on um, serious issues. Uh, and sometimes they um, they take everything seriously, uh, and they perform it in a in a funny way. So um, I wanted to say, uh, for me, for example, uh, that was a, uh, a conversation that was uh, um, I wouldn't uh, imagine that uh, two clowns were able to like uh, talk about it um deeply uh, so that's why i wanted to include it in the film because uh, that uh, shows the the real role of the clown uh, in a way uh, and uh, there is an experience that i lived also with the clowns uh, in one of the scenes that i did not include in the film but i uh, put uh, half of it uh, it was when it was too cold and uh, people uh, volunteers were trying to to put the plastic rolls uh, so they can, because people were there and they were really cold and they wanted to protect them. So uh, it was like maybe the second time that we saw, uh, uh, that we saw uh, people. Uh, and then I called Sabine and I told her, come, you can perform here. And when they came and the, the show started, uh, you uh, you feel the warmth that happened that uh, uh, started in this place, and uh, suddenly we uh, um, we were like we did not want, um, need uh, all these plastic uh, rolls uh, in order to add warmth to the place. So uh, I don't know. I remember also uh, some very interesting. Uh, uh, conversation between Sabine and uh, Colleen and uh, uh, as uh, Jan said that there are uh, roles there are performers and and for Colleen for example uh, what I thought was very interesting is that when she talked about we did not include that uh, in the film but I mean uh, that was from the trip maybe Colleen you can talk about it uh, also about the interaction with people and when you start interacting with people you don't know where it will take you, uh, how you would perform by then, I don't know. Yeah, I, I remember while, um, like uh, when you were talking to Sabine and you said that you were not confident about being a clown and then when you, uh, yeah, and that was like a, a, a very nice experience when you told her that like when you were able to interact, the, the first time you were able to interact with the people you were clowning to, it was like a different experience and a turning point in your experience. Oh yeah, yeah, completely. I learned so much on this project um, from the clowns that I was working with, from you, Cynthia, from Tamara, from everyone. Um, and I think a lot of 
what I learned was watching Sabine's interaction with people, um, the openness and the way you have to listen so captively with every part of your body. Um, and the dialogue starts to build. And I think even if it's not being spoken. And I think I found confidence in trusting myself and trusting that that openness and the willingness and the listening will, it will bring the play and you don't have to plan anything. You just have to be available. And that's pretty much life, right? <laughs> Do you wanna talk about Dead or Alive and showing, showing conflict in a clown show or we, can, or we can skip the question? I can talk about it briefly. Great. Uh, so Dead or Alive is a, a skit, a clown skit that's about as old as the circus, where one of the characters gets hit in the head or something and falls down. And the other, usually two other clowns believe that this character is dead. And they're trying to check him. They lift up the arm, the arm drops down. And then the dead, the dead body starts doing funny robotic-like movements and end up kicking over the other <laughs> living performers. So most of the time, the audience knows that the, the clown is not dead or hurt in any way. Um, it's absurd. Uh, the, 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 the absurdity of it is the clowns in the skit don't know if this character is dead or alive. But it does involve someone laying on the floor playing dead, which some, there was uh, some viewer who had written an email saying that this skit was not appropriate in situations with traumatized audiences or difficult situations. Um, and so we had, we had an extended discussion at night, which was our entertainment for the night as to whether dead or alive was appropriate <laughs> or insensitive, what have you. We end up having these conversations on trips because you're, you're there a long time and you're like, what should we do? Why should we do it? And we're talking about the philosophy of whether to put in this bit or that bit. Like in Haiti, you know, we talked about, should we do magic tricks? Because somebody wrote an email and they said, people in this part of the country believe in voodoo and they'll run us out of town. But it ended up being, they love magic tricks and it didn't matter at all, right? So we had a long discussion about magic tricks in Haiti and it actually didn't matter. I think this was a similar situation, but it was worthwhile to discuss why we put the bit in and, and it's a very fun bit. We, we do it a lot. Did we do it in Lesbos? Sabine, do you remember? Colleen, do you remember? No, you, you decided to uh, not, not to I include can't. it. I, I remember. No, I can't we didn't remember. do it. So for all three or four yeah. shows we got to do, we didn't do it. It wasn't. A <laughs> <laughs> it was really fun, but I'm happy I kept it in the film. <laughs> yeah, and, and just to that end, like what we're doing, we're doing absurd slapstick, right? Slapstick is like where people get hit, they fall down. And Dead or Alive is simply slapstick that takes it to an extreme example in order to create a more extreme joke. So I don't think, I think it was, it's interesting to talk about how dark the material you can put in, how much pain you can see the clown having. That's an interesting question and it, you should be sensitive to that. But whether Dead or Alive went in the show, I think was less of a big deal and more of just a discussion topic. But I also, I also feel like this is, this is a recurrent theme like even whenever, whenever we're performing and wherever we're performing, we always uh, stop and think about, okay, do we include uh, these, these things that are uh, traumatizing for people or that are really hard or, um, and I feel I always have this, uh, th th this, th this idea that, that, that I'm really, really, um, convinced that in clowning we can talk and do anything and everything and it's because because it's fun because people are are joyful and they they they're they're seeing things from a different perspective um they they accept it in a different way and they even get get the best out of it from a from a very very different way so for me personally, I always choose to go to the extreme because I feel, I feel we have this amazing, amazing uh, tool or or medium that we connect with. Uh, we we can we we use to connect with people and and it's we're 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 lucky enough to be able to 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 do all of these things and open conversations with people or in people's minds. Uh, without being, uh, without being, uh, let's say, I don't know, uh, uh, harsh or or cause problems, maybe. <laughs> to be clear, we're not trying to shock people. We're we're trying to have big absurd. Let them give them permission to have big absurd feelings, right? And slapstick and these other kind of things we might put in the show 
where the characters are like really sad or really hurt or really crazy. Just let them have these big feelings um, that and give them permission, the audience during that time to have those feelings, not not to shock them or to inter or to make it political or anything like this. Um, I'd love to know first from Cynthia, but then really from all of it, from everyone, like what's something that you hope viewers take away from the film, either something they learn from the film or something they start a conversation about or think about or a feeling from the film? Well, for me, um, uh, Naomi, it's actually, uh, I invite people to get in the film. Um, um, I don't know, I, I don't have any uh, expectations, but uh, all I, uh, all I wish is that they uh, they like let themselves in the trip in the trip. Thanks. And uh, and to enjoy I'm not to enjoy but I mean to to think. Uh, for me it was like uh, uh, an occasion for uh, to think about life and uh, individuals and uh, the the systems and everything. Um, so um, this is like, an, the, the film is, um, I, I wish they can like uh, let themselves in and uh, think about these things as well. No, I just, I just think the, the film is a journey, is a trip uh, that, that can um, touch really deep feelings in, uh, in us as human beings and how we connect with each other and how stories, um, how we all share stories, um, and it's 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 very interesting what Colleen said that now watching the movie um, during quarantine, she she saw it from a different uh, perspective, and I really think and I really think it's 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 all about that. It's living the journey. Uh, it's not about clowns. It's not about refugees. It's not about war. It's not about frustration. Uh, but it's it's really about all of these things and all of uh, what we go through in life and what uh, what people around us uh, go through. So us as as human beings, um, what really brings us together? I think whenever I watch the film, I'm just so struck by the final scenes with with the girl at the at the port and her laughter and her joy was so palpable for all of us. Uh, the moment that her mother kisses her on the cheek, it, it just, and the people who gather to watch her experience of playing with the clowns, I think in watching the film and then just thinking like on a grander scheme that, that it's worth it. That everything that we go through for, the, for these moments with one person with a small group that, that that has meaning and purpose and that it um, is worth continuing the journey to get to those moments. Um, I think the one thing I would want people to do is, like Colleen said, is the moments are worth it because every person is worth it. And um, sometimes we uh, are bombarded with a lot of messages and crazy things happening in the world. And I think sometimes we try to compartmentalize as a way to control our own emotions and how we react to these types of things, whether it's refugees or quarantines or wars. And uh, I think it's really a, a powerful film to remind us to stay in touch with our humanity because every life is worth it. Uh, congratulations, Cynthia. I never get to say that. I really like the film. And, thank, um, you. thank you, Jan. Uh, yeah, meeting you was really great and getting to spend time with you while we weren't doing these shows was, was really great. Um, and uh, I, I think uh, your, your perspective, um, your story and, and um, your, uh, your humane sense for like the time and place um, was really came through in the, in the final film. It was nice. Thank you, Jan, and thank you, everyone, because you really trusted me, and I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Thank you.